Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Brush Sauce Theater. Today we're going to be looking at some design examples from one of the classes I teach at CGMA. Pardon for my voice, it, I am a little bit under the weather. Uh, so basically we could kind of generalize a lot of what I'll be talking about into three different things with when it pertains to doing concept art and designs and that's the presentation, that's the technique, and that is of course the idea, which is ultimately probably the most important part out of all of those. So we'll look at where some students slip up and what you guys can do to make stronger and more cohesive designs. Alright, so I have a, a handful of uh, some of my students work just kind of scattered around my desktop. They're all in the piles organized by what the situation is and some of them of course will split. So in, in this one is uh, the problem is it's just not uh, finished. There's some areas left largely undone and it breaks some of the areas that are done. Uh, this one, or this pile in general, over in this bottom corner, which would be all of these, uh, the problem is in the referencing, I find. And, of course, this top corner is examples of kind of completed designs, but what we could do to uh, further improve them. So starting with uh, this example here, as you can see, this student is very thorough with their design. This week our goal was to design an interior space that uh, went along to one of the exteriors we designed earlier in the class. Uh, so, you see, very thorough. There's there's major layouts. A uh, simple 3D model was made to really uh, visualize the 3D space. Very good. Uh, I love when uh, students submit full-on reference sheets to show me the design language they're aiming to achieve. That That is always beneficial. And, of course, here we go. We have the, the assignment uh, itself. So, uh, as you guys can see here, there are parts that are extremely well thought out and very thorough right that these pillars are rather refined some of the throne is there and of course some of these pews and uh, seats are getting there as well so aside from some more technical issues that I had with this in regards to perspective and and things like that I want to do uh, is just focus on the design for now and I want to address is like when you have something that uh, is like this thought out right it, it makes it more so obvious particularly when you're also glancing at the reference, when you have areas like this section here, all this, all this, this whole back region, and of course some of this stuff, that it does feel uh, almost kind of a bit bland uh, by design compared to some of the other elements. So what we'd want to do is to bring this up to a level of cohesiveness to match the rest of the uh, design here. Um, and, and I was just starting to vaguely break up, you know, how to do that. See, like taking this this shape that's uh, just a, a rectangle or square extruded out from the wall and what I was trying to show is like see if we break it up and add more bevels to it uh, do more segmenting it will look a lot more visually appealing and then of course add some designs that play into the story uh, to the borders and the paneling of course the floor in a situation like this would also need to be de uh, designed and, and planned out. It was largely left undone, but that's just one of the cases. And it's, it's not because of uh, the student had a lack of reference. It is not um, because they a uh, lack of drawing ability. I think the drawing here is quite, quite good and competent as well, but it's just kind of seeing things through, following the design through, and, and executing to every last little detail. So in this case, what often the problem is that the student typically runs out of time. They'll let me know, preferably ahead of time if that is the case, but that is one situation. Now moving over to category two, which is in uh, the reference category, let's look at this example here, which I think, you know, if we look at it, it does feel very nice, very uh, thorough, and it, it does feel complete. But if we have more context to this, that is, we can see the outside of the design where it's this kind of like this bone themed sort of cottage it's supposed to feel warm and cozy inside almost be like a place for a witch and we see some of the reference that they actually submitted here uh, for me that's where the problems start to become more evident so what's happening here with this reference is that it it's all giving us the same information to draw from uh, there's a not too much variety going on between them uh, and that we want to inc basically increase the visual language as much as we can um, and how that's kind of filtering through our memory and to do that I would recommend having a greater variety of references in this case not to say that these individually aren't bad at all they they're actually quite good 
But uh, again, coming back to the art direction uh, side of things, if we try to, if we want to hit some of these shapes and some of these tones that is kind of going along with the design, I recommend it actually like doing a little research and getting some images like from uh, Pinocchio and just some other Witch Cottage items that are set up on the internet as well. So what I liked about these Pinocchio background designs is that everything has a certain thickness and weight to it. Everything feels bold. Everything has almost like a softer feel to it, and I feel like that will complement what you know the artist was going for rather well. So that's the first major thing that would have to do with various parts of the construction. And then this stuff is all for set, drip, uh, set dressing and prop purposes. So I think having some reference combined you know, with the original room set up, you know, just finding a good layout for all of that, I think that would yield better results on the design front. And uh, this is what I try to recommend uh, as, do, as a brief place to start, right? And that's just to kind of widen everything up, uh, you know, thicken it up quite a bit, add, add a sense of weight to it, perhaps make the fireplace itself feel more skull or bone uh, shaped and theme um, and I was trying to uh, address the idea of like adding more bone integration like maybe this is like part of like a spine or something into the language of the house itself as there were bones very uh, obviously designed and integrated in the exterior but none of that besides from the lamp here was found on the interior and that makes a bit of a disconnect a little bit of a uh, a break in the cohesiveness of the design as well so I think just kind of addressing some of those smaller things and of course bringing it up and and adding you know a lot of weight and size to a lot of the shapes on the interior you know c could go rather well now the second part of the problems that I generally see with references w with these uh, now the second part I generally find with references are generally categorized into with these two examples that I'm putting up on display now and that's like, all right, the idea is kind of there, and the layout is there. Like, th these artists even submitted, like, a top-down layout view and everything like that. So, like, the, the, the three-dimensional space is, is visualized in its design, but there's nothing that really goes beyond that. The walls, right, they're all blank slates. And for the most part, um, there's not a sense of, of texture or history to the designed elements. Um, individually as a whole so like if this is supposed to be some kind of war room or a place for meetings that is in like some kind of military base that's what you'd want to uh, reference and research right you want to go type in military bunkers Soviet bases World War II what, World War II command decks shuttle launch stations whatever you can find and this would you know similarly need that lo level of design into it because right now what these basically just feel like are exercises in perspective. Now, what you'd want to look at for something like this, right, is maybe something like a cathedral, maybe something Baroque even, maybe uh, something uh, completely uh, old world and ancient, maybe something like Mesopotamian or Sumerian, something to get some visual language into these shapes will exponentially increase the richness of the design as a whole. Now, the top two are the examples that I felt felt like complete designs, right? We have this, this fine example here, which gives us an isometric uh, breakdown of the layout, and then we have like an in-perspective camera shot. This one, we just have the camera shot. I, I guess I should have brought the, the view. There was also one of these submitted as well. But uh, the, the two differences on this one is, is like this one actually feels finished for like a black and white image and concept. Like this really does feel rather complete and you know I like it for that there'd be very minimal changes I feel to do to get this you know to go anywhere it needs to be now this one right although it, the space is all there all the elements are designed but it is a little bit on the rougher side of things so if we're talking purely about presentation here this would need a once over you know where you simply lay down a sheet and go to trace over it and then firmly uh, you know clean up the idea as you go I, I had like a subtle suggestion of you know moving in uh, the truck, upscaling it a little bit, adding some fans and 
fence and, and various places, but it very minimal changes. It it is a complete idea, but it's just not an idea presented in the best way to sell it. So hopefully you can see the difference there. Uh, you can always have like a great idea, but if it's poorly presented or or undersold, it it's not going to get anywhere. Whereas if you can have an average to poor idea, but you're exceptionary at like selling it and and presenting it, you could you could do that. So it's just a, it's a balancing act with everything. So let me know if you guys have any questions in regard to this. Next week I do hope to put out a review of uh, the XP pen, and then we'll go from there. All right. So take care, and of course have a great season. Thank you for checking out my video. You can support the channel if you'd like by subscribing, liking, or commenting on my videos. You can find me on the web on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Those are the social media outlets I utilize. I also teach two courses at the Computer Graphics Master's Academy, Architecture Design and the Fundamentals of Design. Feel free to check those out. Now if the classes aren't few, I also teach one-on-one. -on -one. Join the hundreds of students around the world for one-on-one -on -one learning and for more info just send me an email. Also feel free to join the Brush Sauce Discord community. There's links below. It's fun. We do weekly hangouts. There's the challenges and it's a great place to make friends. Take care.